It's been two years since the Bohemian Rhapsody movie was released. How time flies, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you all know that I loved the film. I watched it more times than I would like to admit. Although, something that is overlooked when it comes to the Queen biopic is the soundtrack. I honestly believe it's perfect, and here's why. Right, let's get the elephant out of the room. The accompanying album was meticulously crafted to firstly appeal to longtime fans of Queen, even those of us who may have been listening to the band's music way back in the 70s, and secondly, the soundtrack is also fantastic for those of us who may have just watched the movie and then decided we wanted to get into Queen's music. Therefore, buying this album. For new fans, you've got the essentials on here. Some of the band's greatest hits, with the likes of The Show Must Go On, Killer Queen, and Crazy Little Thing. It gives anyone new an idea of what this band is slash was all about. The soundtrack displays how Queen's music developed and changed over the years. Moreover, there is an emphasis on how the band weren't afraid to experiment with different genres. For instance, there's another one bites the dust with its disco sound, and then you've got I Want to Break Free. The single employs elements of synth pop. As for longtime fans who may be familiar with Queen's entire catalogue, there's something here for them too, with arguably certain lesser known songs on here, such as Love of My Life, Doing Alright, and Keep Yourself Alive. Additionally, certain numbers feature live versions, rather than the studio versions. This is heard with Fat Bottomed Girls being taken from a live show in Paris, and Now I'm Here from the Hammersmith Odeon. In addition, there have been more minor tweaks made to specific tracks. This can be heard with Don't Stop Me Now especially, having more of an anthemic quality to it. All I'm trying to say is, it keeps both longtime fans and newcomers happy. In terms of structure, the songs are put in order of when they are played in the film. Having watched the movie once and then listening to this album, you'll most likely be able to remember the scenes in which the tracks take place in. It takes you on a journey, an emotional journey. It begins with a rendition of the 20th Century Fox fanfare, which is epic, but that's beside the point. Bo Rap truly begins with Somebody to Love. What a great way to start an album, with one of their most recognisable songs. We then follow Queen from the beginning with Keep Yourself Alive, and then into the 80s, with Who Wants to Live Forever acting as the most poignant part of the OST. But then there's Queen's Live Aid performance. It's brilliant, even just listening to the audio. It's an emotional roller coaster until we inevitably have the upbeat Don't Stop Me Now. And finally, the show must go on, which is an amazing way to end the soundtrack. Obviously, Bo Rap changed the story slightly, with Freddy knowing of his illness prior to Live Aid. Although, this makes sense why The Show Must Go On is on this album, as it touches on how, in the movie, Mercury chose to perform at Live Aid, despite all the hardships he was facing. Personally, I believe the soundtrack does a spectacular job in terms of the structure, and it obviously complements the plot of the movie. 
something I wish to give this album extra points for is how much effort was put into it. Of course, this is clear just from listening to the OST, with how, as I stated earlier, they added minor tweaks to Don't Stop Me Now. And there's of course the structure. However, I'm thinking more about the artwork. For the final album release of Bo Rap, this looks awesome on display. I've always loved this image they often use to promote the movie. Obviously, it's inspired by this photo, yet Freddy is now sporting his Live Aid attire. Although, it's always the inside of this soundtrack that has stood out to me. You've got numerous images from the movie, it's spellbinding. You've also got a piano in the bottom right corner. As for the sleeves, we have four images, featuring the band members. I particularly like this picture of Freddie Mercury from the Magic Tour. And the other sleeve has this image of Queen, clearly on the day of Live Aid. The attention to detail here is astonishing and is fully appreciated. In summary, the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack is simply perfect. It caters to old and new fans, has terrific structure, and had a lot of effort put into it, even with the artwork of the soundtrack. It's no wonder why we're still talking about the movie after two years. In retrospect, I see this album as a celebration of Queen's music. Considering this year, 2020, marks 50 years of Queen, you can bet that I'm playing the OST for Bo Rap as much as humanly possible.